Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about infective endocarditis and its management. You know that infective endocarditis means infection of the valve. The valve can be sometimes previously damaged due to rheumatic heart disease, mitral valve collapse, or any other other heart disease can produce valve damage. On the damaged valve, patient can develop infective endocarditis. or in a normal valve without any problem also patient can develop infective endocarditis like somebody is taking drug drug abuses drug abuses they mainly inject drug through the uh, iv line so that the uh, bacteria or uh, any other organism which can enter to the blood circulation it can go to the right sided heart and it can produce infective endocarditis on right sided heart even the valve is normal it can produce right sided infective endocarditis sometimes the valve is replaced or infective endocarditis can present on the replaced valve so we can see what are the predisposing conditions for this infective endocarditis that is congenital heart disease rheumatic heart disease one of the important condition where mr ar as congenital heart disease vst pda ps tof coactation of aorta ms asd mitral stenosis and asd they are they are both are low uh, incidence of infective endocarditis we can see because they are not high pressure uh, lesions they are low pressure lesions prostatic valves iv drug abuses marantic endocarditis means non infective endocarditis conditions like sle malignancy and all you can get marantic endocarditis the lesion in infective endocarditis is actually a vegetation vegetation means it's a mass containing platelets fibrin micro colonies of microorganism and some inflammatory tissues that is the uh, vegetation now we have patients who is having high risk uh, for infective endocarditis moderate risk for infective endocarditis like we already discussed that prosthetic valve previous history of endocarditis complex cyanotic congenital heart disease complex congenital heart disease after correction pda coagulation of aorta moderate the risk is vst acquired aortic mitral valve dysfunction mvp with mr mvp alone is not a risk factor for infective endocarditis but mvp with mr is a risk factor for infective endocarditis bicuspid aortic valve especially when it is associated with as or ir now common organism we can see uh, for the normal infective normal valve endocarditis that is streptococcus viridans hesec organism hemophilus actinobacillus uh, cardiobacterium echinella kingella these are the organisms which can affect the normal valve streptococcus bovis uh, staphylococcus aureus prosthetic valve staphylococcus aureus and even mrsa diphtheroids gram negative bacilli infective endocarditis in intravenous drug abuses that is mainly occurring in the right sided heart because the when you are taking iv drug abuse it directly go to the right side heart and produces tricuspid valve infective endocarditis it's mainly staph aureus and mrsa now when you see the clinical findings like any other infection patient can have high degree fever chills uh, rigor sweating all these things can be there in infective endocarditis also there are cardiac complications like patient can have uh, new onset mitral regurgitation aortic regurgitation or increase in the stenotic lesions uh, changing murmurs or new murmurs can occur in some patients most of the time if if clubbing is there then that will be painful clubbing cutaneous embolism or janvey lesions can be there in many patients neurological complication like embolic stroke that will be infective embolic stroke intracerebral hemorrhage mycotic aneurysm hemorrhage brain abscess others can be there like seizure and all can be there metastatic lesions you can get osteomyelitis septic arthritis psoas abscess so many other complications can occur now other clinical features are splinter hemorrhages over the nails petechial rashes absence of peripheral pulses stroke due to embolism especially infective embolism splenomegaly splenic rub oslers nodes rod spots hematuria all these things are uh, some findings of infective endocarditis Oslers nodes are painful tender swollen nodules in the fingers rod spots are seen in the retinal uh, hemorrhages you can see in the 
fundoscopy. These are uh, classical findings, splinter hemorrhages on the nail, Janeway lesions on the hand, Oslase nodes on the hand and rod spots on the uh, retina. So, these are the common findings. So, these two pictures show how uh, what are the major findings of infective endocarditis. We have discussed all these things. One important finding you have to see in spleen that is the uh, most of the infective endocarditis cases you can get a uh, splenomegaly or a moderate uh, splenomegaly can be there. Sometimes patient can have splenic rub and splenic infarct signs. They can have splenic rub and tenderness on the splenic palpation all these things can be there. So, uh, mostly it is like any other infection patient can have almost all findings of infection and we have seen some specific signs like oscillate nodes and rod spots. Uh, splinter hemorrhages like that. Some specific findings are there, some new onset murmurs are there. So, these are the common findings of infective endocarditis. Sometimes patient will not have all these findings. Sometimes patient will present with uh, pyrexia of unknown origin. That is a commonest presentation because whenever patient come to an hospital, we take blood culture and we start antibiotic and because of this uh, antibiotic, most of the time infect infection will be uh, partly subsided or partly treated. We will start the antibiotic for any infection and we stop the antibiotic after one week. Normally, we give for seven days. So, by the time infection will come down, when the when we stop the antibiotic, again the infection will come. So, ultimately, it will become a pyrexia of unknown origin. So, uh, if it is not a specialized center, we may miss the diagnosis also. In that type of patients, we may not get all the peripheral findings of uh, infective endocarditis, what we discussed patient will just present as an infective endocarditis. That's why in infect, uh, that's why in pyrexia of unknown origin, you need to examine for the heart and you need to do uh, echo and transesophageal echo to rule out an infective endocarditis. So, pyrexia of unknown origin will be the one of the commonest presentation of infective endocarditis in our country. Whereas, in western world, they uh, try to diagnose it as soon as possible with uh, uh, echo or whatever it is. But in our country, because of the large population, uh, 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 like uh, facilities, uh, because of the lack of facilities in many centers, we may miss the diagnosis. Unfortunately, many patients will present with pyrexia of unknown origin. So, it is our duty to find out uh, uh, whether this patient is having infective endocarditis or not. So, one of the most important differential diagnosis of uh, Pyrexia of unknown origin is infective endocarditis, especially when there is a cardiac murmur. Now, acute and subacute infective endocarditis. Acute means high degree fever, rapid cardiac failure, uh, hematogenous spread to other organs, uh, and sometimes patient will have multi organ dysfunction death. Subacute means a slow course of disease, patient present with mainly PO, that is a classical finding, PO. PO can be due to the subacute infection or it can be a partly treated infective endocarditis. Both are possi possible and a patient can have slow progression, less complication, smaller uh, course of disease. All these things can be seen. Now, once you suspect infective endocarditis, any infection normally in any emergency room, we take blood culture before try to give antibiotic only after blood culture, but it is a serious infection, we try to give antibiotic without waiting for the culture or uh, culture uh, uh, like uh, without drawing the blood for culture itself, we will start antibiotic. But in a patient who is having pyrexia of unknown origin or patient is having a prolonged fever, wait uh, and uh, wait, wait before giving antibiotic take blood cultures that is very very important so blood culture positivity and echo findings will tell you whether the patient is having infective endocarditis at least three samples of blood culture we have to take three samples from different areas in different time that is very important because we want to prove that there is a continuous flow of bacteria through the blood blood stream so sometimes when we take uh, blood culture from one hand if it is not taken properly we can see some contamination there and one sample will be positive for some contamination like cephalococcus can be there in some some uh, some uh, sample but if you are taking three or more samples and if you are getting only one sample positive then it is mostly a contamination if it is more than two samples positive 
two or more samples positive, then it is a continuous flow of bacteria throughout your bloodstream. So, uh, repeated samples are very, very important in uh, blood culture of a patient who is having suspicion of infective endocarditis. Another one is echocardiogram. Echocardiogram is very, very important because whenever we are suspecting infective endocarditis, to know whether the uh, patient is having vegetations or not, we have to do an echocardiogram. Sometimes we, we have to go for transesophageal echogram, TEE. So, normally we do routine echocardiogram, it may not pick up the lesions in a routine echocardiogram. When you are suspecting a infective endocarditis, it is better to go for a transesophageal echocardiogram. If we are not getting a normal echocardiogram, uh, transthoracic echocardiogram uh, is normal. So, that is very important. There are other criteria also. This criteria is called as Duke's criteria. Whatever it is, in that Duke's criteria, two major criteria are one is blood culture positivity, second one is evidence for endocardial involvement or uh, any echocardiographic uh, lesions in the valve or uh, near to valve. Other uh, minor criteria are uh, predispose, predisposing factors like we have already seen, fever, uh, vascular phenomenon also we have seen, uh, immunological phenomenon like uh, glomerulonephritis, osseous nodes, rot spots and rheumatoid factor. Microbiological evidence again positive blood culture but does not meet the criteria which is mentioned above. So, it is very important. Now, how to take blood culture that is very important. Three blood cultures with two bottles per set. One is aerobic, one is anaerobic like that six culture bottles you have to take separated each by at least one hour. So, the interval between each sampling is one hour should be obtained from three different sites over 24 hours and the optimal volume for each blood sample is 20 ml. That is because you want to prove that the bacteria uh, flow through your blood circulation is continuous. In infective endocarditis, the bacteria which is present in the uh, lesion in the cardiac lesion which will be continuously spreading bacteria throughout the circulation. So, throughout the day, throughout the circulation we are getting bacteria positivity in blood culture then we can make a diagnosis. Only one sample is positive then it mostly it will be a contamination for by uh, during uh, uh, the blood culture sampling. If the culture are negative after 48 to 72 hours, two to two or three additional blood culture sets also should be obtained because sometimes we may not get in a patient who is partly treated. Suppose the patient is having infective endocarditis, he is uh, partly treated with septrelaxone or something thinking that there is a possible infection. You, if you take a blood culture initially, it may be negative. So, stop all the antibiotic, wait for some more time. If the patient develops fever again, then repeat the culture. Again, three samples, three sets of samples should, should be taken from three different sites at three different time. So, that is very, very important. Sometimes we will get culture negative infective endocarditis also. Whatever we try to do culture, some bacteria or some fungus, virus may not be positive in your culture. So, you have to go for specialized methods for that or you can go for PCR technique or some other diagnostic method. But ideal thing is always do culture. 6 bottles of culture should be taken, 20 ml should be there in each bottle, it should be taken from different sites at different time. So, that is very important. Now, ECG may show prolonged PR interval, first degree heart block or any other heart blocks are possible because the infection can uh, uh, also uh, produce some problem to the conductive system of the heart. So, uh, any types of heart blocks are possible, first degree heart block is the most possible thing. Trans uh, thoracic echocardiography can pick up most of the lesions, but if we are not getting any lesion in the transthoracic echocardiography and if you are strongly suspecting infective endocarditis or if you are treating a pyrexia of unknown origin, it is better to go for transesophageal echocardiography or TEE. That will be the best option. Now, once you suspect uh, infective endocarditis and once you draw blood for sampling, uh, even before getting a proper report, you can start empirical antibiotic therapy. If the patient is sick, 
if the patient is fully stable if the patient does not have any clinical deterioration he can wait because uh, uh, mild degree fever and we should not uh, start antibiotic in a hurry we have to wait for the culture report if it is negative we have to take repeat cultures the problem is uh, without getting a uh, proper report if you are starting antibiotic again the problem will remain same normally infective endocarditis requires a proper antibiotic therapy for uh, at least uh, sometimes 6 weeks so instead of that if you are giving antibiotic weekly and stopping it again giving one more week again stopping it that may create more problem and it will produce diagnostic uh, dilemma so better to wait for the culture report if the culture report is negative if the patient is fully stable wait one or two days and take another set of cultures and prove that there is infective endocarditis and prove that some bacteria is infected now empirical therapy can be given if the patient is uh, uh, very sick and we are suspecting strongly suspecting infective endocarditis you can see the chart most of the uh, most of these drugs co- they are combination of drugs you can see wherever whichever slide you can see whichever combination you are, you are taking you can see if you are suspecting an infective endocarditis and if the patient come to er and if the patient is uh, slightly unstable we have to start antibiotic empirically empirical means we are covering uh, both gram positive and gram negative organism these are the common organisms so gram positive and gram negative organism are the common organism so to cover that normally we have to give penicillin with gentamicin or penicillin with ceftriaxone penicillin uh, or uh, uh, ceftriaxone with vancomycin like that we have to give one drug to cover gram positive one gram drug to cover gram negative so throughout this uh, slide you can see that there is a combination of one gram positive and one gram negative for example you see penicillin resistant staphylococcus but we are only suspecting penicillin resistant staphylococcus we have not received the culture report so you can give ceftriaxone 2 gram iv od for 4 weeks and vancomycin 50 mg iv bd for 4 weeks here ceftriaxone will cover the gram positive sorry gram negative organism and vancomycin will cover gram positive including mrsa that's why that combination is selected so any combination you see you can see one drug covers gram positive one drug drug will cover gram negative and most of the time this is for 2 to 4 weeks sometimes we will have to give for 6 weeks also now follow up blood culture any patient who is getting treatment after uh, initial blood culture uh, positivity we start antibiotic and two sets of blood culture every 24 to 48 hours until the blood stream infection is cleared that is very important because when you are starting antibiotic depending on either empirically or depending on the culture report we must know that this patient is responding to our treatment sometimes uh, it may be post uh, the culture may be showing sensitivity to some antibiotic in the lab investigation but in uh, patient it may not work like that so when you start antibiotic you have to we, you have to uh, prove that this antibiotic is working only way to prove that it is patient one is clinical improvement in patient fever may subside chills may subside subside uh, appetite may come back but you have to prove that it is working for that you have to do a repeat cultures after every 48 hours that is very very important and in normally we have to continue the antibiotic for 4 to 6 weeks depending on the pathogen some patients who require uh, uh, like highly virulent organism we have to continue more than 6 weeks whatever it is more most of the patients may require 4 to 6 weeks but depending on the culture report depending on the repeat culture report we will have to uh, change the uh, 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 regimen according to the culture report now we'll talk about prophylaxis against infective endocarditis whenever we are doing any medical procedure in any patient if there is a pre existing cardiac lesion sometimes this patient can develop problem and it, the procedure can induce some bacteria into our blood stream and patient can develop infective endocarditis there are a lot of lesions which can be uh, which can be problematic when we are uh, when we are treating the patient with uh, Uh, some procedures like uh, prophylaxis indicated in prosthetic cardiac valves previous infective endocarditis patients 
unpaired uh, cyanotic congenital heart disease, uh, completely uh, uh, repaired congenital heart defect with prosthetic metallic device, uh, repaired congenital heart disease with residual defects. Uh, like that so many uh, cardiac transplant recipients, rheumatic heart disease if prosthetic valves or prosthetic material is replaced, all these conditions we have to give infective endocarditis. Some low risk areas are there, there we no need to give any infective endocarditis prophylaxis especially atrial septal defect, some minimal uh, ventricular septal defect, all these things prophylactic may, prophylaxis may not be indicated. Now, indication for prophylaxis against infective endocarditis in most of the dental procedures we have to give gram positive coverage. Respiratory tract coverage uh, infection also we have to give uh, gram positive coverage. I am not going to tell all the uh, thing detail wherever you are doing procedure uh, read about that whether that procedure require infective endocarditis prophylaxis or not that is very important and you have to always look at what is a heart lesion he is having whether it is high risk lesion or low risk lesion that is also important. Now, GI uh, and urinary tract procedure some procedures may uh, require uh, infective endocarditis prof prophylaxis especially when there is a high risk uh, lesion in the ha heart valve. Now, procedures on infected skin most of the time that is these patients require infective endocarditis prophylaxis because that is the commonest organism gram positive cocci are the commonest organism which can produce uh, infective endocarditis. Now, to, uh, uh, to give infective endocarditis prophylaxis again the drugs are uh, depending on where you are uh, doing the procedure. If it is above diaphragm, it is mostly a gram positive cocci coverage. If it is below diaphragm, it is mostly a gram negative coverage. You can see the chart here. Above the diaphragm, you mostly give amoxicillin, ampicillin, clintamycin, all these things. You all covers gram positive, uh, gram positive organism. Whereas below the diaphragm, you give uh, drugs which can cover uh, gram negative organism, ampicillin, gentamicin, vancomycin, like that. Uh, above and below uh, diaphragm there is slight difference in treatment but whatever it is uh, we have to give infective endocarditis prophylaxis in major procedures whether it is above or below diaphragm uh, lesions and if the patient is having a high risk uh, lesion for infective endocarditis. Now dosing of antibiotic. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be given in a single dose before the procedure that is very very important. Suppose you miss the uh, single dose before the procedure you can even administer uh, it after the procedure and some patients may require uh, one or two doses that depends on the clinical scenario. But mostly if you know that there is a cardiac lesion it is better to give the antibiotic before the procedure itself so that you can prevent the infective endocarditis. And some centers uh, may not recommend infective endocarditis in many lesions nowadays. But however, standard textbooks uh, I have given the list of uh, procedures which require infective endocarditis in the previous slides. So, we have discussed about one important clinical scenario that is infective endocarditis. In emergency room, they can come as uh, two separate entities one is pyrexia of unknown origin. Another one is high degree fever chills rigors. High degree fever chills rigors, we routinely take the blood culture and we st start antibiotic. So, here we may make some mistake because infective endocarditis is a condition where if you treat antibiotic for one week, then the patient uh, you will not get proper diagnosis. So, always take at least uh, if you are strongly suspecting infective endocarditis, especially when there is a cardiac murmur with fever always take three samples of blood culture. Another scenario is pyrexia of unknown origin. Any patient is having pyrexia of unknown origin when they admitted to emergency room, it is better to stop all the drugs. Whatever drugs he is on, stop the drugs. Wait for at least 48 hours, see the patient is having recurrence of fever or not. If there is recurrence of fever, it is better to strongly suspect infective endocarditis and treat uh, it accordingly and take blood culture as soon as possible. Take blood culture, three samples. Even if it is negative, 
then repeat one more set of blood culture because uh, pyrexia of unknown origin uh, if you uh, if you give antibiotic immediately again it will be masking all the um, blood culture samples and it, blood culture results it may mask so you may not get good result after that so it is better to make a proper diagnosis in infective endocarditis without missing the bat bacteria because some bacteria, uh, some high risk patients may require long term therapy. A small error from the emergency room can produce big problem for the patient. So it is always better to treat uh, according to standard guidelines in infective endocarditis. Thank you.